All right, welcome back. In this uh, course, we're going to, in this lesson, we're going to start the beginning of creating your own unique customized Boolean and taking you through the workflow of how to do that. And uh, to get started, I want to first remind everyone this is not a mandatory uh, section. If you wish, you can simply download the customizable Boolean, and then from there, we're going to go, we can, you can just simply move on to the next section and use the applied Boolean you want. But if you want to look at the workflow and learn how to create your own customized Booleans or go through different patterns or expand on the concept to make different shape looking Booleans that have different components indented into them, you can certainly, uh, this would be a great place to review this lesson to help you get there. So uh, to get started, Let's go ahead in this lesson we're going to do the basic initial block out of the boolean uh, to give you an idea how this all works here. It, uh, what we have here looks like it's inverted but that's the whole idea of a boolean. It's about not necessarily what is being pressed on this side but what it comes looking out when it's pressed up against something that's on the other side of this plate. So let me give you an example. If I were to invert this, you don't care about what this side is. It's about setting everything up so that it looks like this on the other side. So to uh, get started with that, I'm going to bring a, I'm going to hit append and bring in a 3D cube. And then from there, I'm going to turn on my transparency with that cube selected on that subtool. I'm going to go ahead and hit the R key scale him down to a similar width as my uh, my customized boolean and maybe even uh, bring him up and line him up with my customized boolean that I have imported in and use that as sort of like a reference uh, beginner place for me to start at. So from this point I'm going to then give it some subdivisions so uh, probably seven subdivisions. It's a little high, that's about 2 million, but remember that uh, in a customized boolean it's actually not going to, like I'd say one third of that is going to be used, so you're not, and it's only going to be the imprinted section, so yeah, you don't think that every uh, thing you apply a customized boolean to is going to have 2 million points. It's probably like one third, maybe even less than that, so um, anyways, moving on. I'm going to create a little cavity here. So to do that, I'm going to hold down control. And um, yeah, it doesn't matter if you have the stroke on here, if you're clicking off and holding control, just marquee select and bring in a square. I'm releasing control, but still holding my square open. And we're going to use our space bar trick, our panning trick. And uh, just keeping that, I'm going to align everything up right up around there. Now from this point, I'm going to go ahead and it did uh, kind of get the back of this max, so I want to go ahead and clear this part off, so I'm going to move it to the side, hit shift to snap it sideways, and then hold control and marquee select, and then now release control, and then hold down alt, and that will give us a subtractive state in our marquee mask, like so. Now from this point, let's invert our mask, hold control and just click off into empty space. And then from there, I'm just going to uh, make my mask to around that depth. All right, so I'm going to turn the Boolean off and uh, just a little warning heads up. One thing I think I'm going to do and uh, actually, I'm sorry to do this to you guys, but uh, I'm going to actually kind of go up to my slider here and I'm going to go back to the point where it says mask here. And I'm going to look at that with shift F and I'm going to hold and hit command control W. I'd like to turn that into a poly group. And uh, just for the sake of keeping things uh, nice and neat. Now that's going to clear your mask, so if you need to regain uh, it back, it's make sure you hold Control, Shift, you make sure you're on selection mode, that's this mode, and left click tap, you'll get an isolate select on there, but everything, it will make it a hell of a lot easier to marquee select and get your polygroup uh, mask back again. 
then bring everything back. It's just clicking off in a space and hitting Control Shift. And then finally, invert the mask just by holding Control and left click. Now that's, uh, I know, it sounds like it's a headache with all these uh, <laughs> quick keys, but uh, I promise you if you're consistent and you're practicing, this is going to be very easy like second nature and writing, uh, in handwriting and cursive to you. So uh, just bear with it. All right, so from this point, we're going to then hit W key and uh, bring this guy back in to about that uh, height. And from here, I'm going to go ahead and hold Control Shift and isolate this guy, this mask off. From this point on, I'm going to start making some uh, simple little square mask patterns for us to work with. So let's go ahead and uh, I'm just holding Control, bringing in some pieces. And I'm just doing, and feel free to do a uh, hold control, release control, and keep the mask alive, of course, with your left by still holding that left mouse and do a space bar and pan it across like so. Maybe like that. Maybe do that. And now I'm just subtracting. So I'm holding control, releasing control, panning it in, and then I'm holding down left alt. It's a good place. And then from there, I'm going to then clean out the edges here. So I'm going to then just hold control, marquee select to draw out a mask, keep the mask alive holding that left mouse button, but release control, and then left alt to create my subtractive mode. We're going to do the same thing on each side, like so. And I'm just simply going through and I'm just going through and uh, just creating a pattern. Now from here, I'm going to invert the selection and then just hit the W key and bring everything up like so. All right, and then I'm clearing the mask. And now we're gonna do the same thing again, except this time we're gonna do it, if we want, I'd like to, you know, give yourself a little uh, wiggle room space if you have to, uh, go back a little bit and bring this in. Go ahead and do that. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and give myself a little wiggle room space right there and just continue the whole process again just so I can have a couple of layers of thickness on here. But I want to also make sure uh, that I have some good places. Now the one thing to take away is, is that when you're making all of these, you want to keep in mind that the elevated areas that you're seeing here are going to be the areas uh, that will be used uh, to draw in wires. In other words, the areas coming towards us because again, that's inverted and on the other side, it's gonna be cavities uh, that you're gonna see. So it's going to be something like that uh, later on down the road. All right, and again, it's just sort of a rinse and repeating the same process again. But 
like so. And you know, you could do this as many times as you want. I'm only repeating the process just twice. You can create a whole bunch if you wish. You can take it beyond what I'm going, you can feel free to go beyond what I'm doing and do better than me. That's kind of the whole point. I'd love to see people like surpass me because I love to be challenged and uh, get a uh, get motivated, inspired by other people's work. So, all right, now let's go back to our subtractive state. And then I'm going to make sure to clear the corners here. So one more time to call it out, hold control, left click, drag out, release control, keep the mouse uh, button still held down so the mask is still alive in the marquee and hold down left alt to minus off. All right, invert the mask. And now we're gonna bring these guys in like so. And from that point, we're going to even go further. And I'm going to see if I can get away with something here. I'd like to see if I can uh, flatten this down. So uh, let's center this out and with the upside down teardrop. And let's just keep uh, bringing this uh, guy in until we can get a little piece going on there and we can flatten everything we see out because again this is going to be the cavity areas that are on the other side and these are going to be the areas you fill the wires in so let's just go ahead and again they're going to sit just above the second layer that we have here all right and if you need to feel free to separate those pieces off if you have any need to organize the masks to help you Again, that's just holding, uh, everything's already in a mask. You can invert the mask or not invert the mask, but you can just hold and hit Control W or Command W to get there. And then finally, we bring back our whole piece by just clicking off the side and hit Control Shift. So that is uh, where we're going to stop from there. Uh, in the next course, we're going to go over a little bit on how to fill in the wires here. If you want, you can go through the uh, mask here that you made and invert it and make it a little bit deeper so that it will be a little more comforting to house uh, those uh, wires for the other side, if you wish. Uh, so in the, again, the next course, we're going to talk to you about uh, the insert curve brush uh, for the, I think it's going to be the first time, and uh, how we can manipulate that and how we're going to draw it into here. So stay tuned.